Hello. Hi, everyone. Welcome back. As part of the today's session, let us see how exactly we can write down a simple program for this uh, Karate UI automation and check out how exactly it's executing. Okay, a basic script creation and an execution part we are going to study as part of the today's lecture. For which, what I'm doing means I'm opening my Eclipse editor and within the same package, you know, let me create a new feature file for me. Okay, so here I'm choosing a file option and demo feature one or demo UI one dot feature. Okay, I have a created a demo UI one dot feature and these many contents it got a created. I don't want all these things. I'm just deleting this information. I don't want this complete chunk. Hence, I'm deleting this whole details. I don't want all these details. Okay, and the feature file validating UI um, browser launch. Okay, validating UI browser launch. Open lebby.com on the browser. Okay, and I don't want all these things. So in order to write down the Karate UI syntax for which what I'm doing right now means I'm navigating to these uh, Karate official documentation here. And if you see right now, the syntax they have a given is given driver followed by your application URL and input and a click then wait for URL. As of now, I don't know what exactly the input is, the click is, wait for URL is. We don't know all these things. But right now, what I'm doing right now means given driver is that particular URL. So here given driver space, that application URL, HTTP. So I'm just giving the application URL levy.com that's it i have a given this application url as per the program they have a defined i haven't written anything else i'm just defining only there's a browser url itself okay now right click on your feature file you do have an option which is run as a cucumber feature you can use this run as a cucumber feature and guys if you are having an idea on api testing or a cucumber bdd you can understand what is a feature scenario given and all those things if you don't have any idea kindly refer to the cucumber videos which we have to get some insights about what exactly this feature is scenario given when then and all these notes but for now i'm using a cucumber feature and let me try to run it and see what it is happening so some log is being generated see if you observe a chrome browser is launched it's trying to launch a chrome browser see a chrome browser was launched but on this chrome browser it's trying to perform some operations and nothing got performed here on this particular chrome browser there is a version compatibility issue because of which it was unable to execute this particular scenario. Okay, the browser is being launched and in which it's unable to interact with that particular browser. So there is an invalid handshake response that we got from the browser. So how are we going to deal with it? So by default, as per the documentation, if you give like this, automatically it will launch a browser. But for us, in the current situation, whenever I am creating an instance to the driver, I'm getting the issue. That's the reason. In the configuration, click on the driver. Let us see that information that you have on this particular driver. So in this particular driver, they have a given some details, given driver with respect to this particular URL, it's gonna open it. So what I'm doing right now means, let us go to the configure driver. So this is the configure driver. So when can you go to the configure driver means, I wanna launch my browser explicitly. In such a cases, I can go with this a configure driver. Okay, so when can we go with this configuration? If I want to configure my browser explicitly. So here, what I'm doing means given 
and I am doing a configure. See here, configure driver is equal to open bracket and a close the bracket. So here they have a given type as a Chrome. You need to give type as a Chrome. And for that particular Chrome, you can also pass the executable file. If you are using a Mac machine, here is the location for your executable file. If you are using a Windows machine, here is the default location for this executable file. It's not mandatory to pass this executable file. You can ignore it. And if you scroll down a bit here, they have a given a table wise metrics or a data what exactly you can do a configuration level so i can pass on a type type means what exactly the browser that we are targeting for see if you see these drivers a type i just opened it in a new tab the drivers a type so it supports the chrome browser chrome driver jaco driver safari driver msh driver these are all the various drivers that it's gonna support so what I'm doing right now means as for my current execution, I'm targeting for Chrome. That's the reason I'm defining type colon space Chrome. I have a defined this particular Chrome. Okay. Explicitly, I have a defined this particular Chrome. And let me try to run it again and see what it's going to happen. So you have a just specified a Chrome and this Chrome is trying to interact with the 922 port. Okay. So it's trying to interact with the 922 port. That's what it's trying to interact. Okay. And if you see right now, again, it got a fail and the same, the socket hang up issue, which is a 403 forbidden error. And whenever you are working on and whenever you are encountering this 403 forbidden, in such a cases, you need to add options to your browser. Okay, I need to add options to my browser. What exactly the options that I want to add? I want to add the remote allow origins capability is equal to i want to allow this one to start that's it so whenever you are encountering these types of okay the protocol handshake and 403 forbidden you need to add an option which is a remote allow origins let me try to run this script again and see upon adding this particular one run as this particular thing now Okay, now it's trying to launch the Chrome browser. See, the Chrome browser was launched again. And let us see whether it is performing the operations or not. Still, it doesn't perform the operations. Now, what I'm doing means, let me kill my Chrome browser. And here, by default, the Chrome browser is going on a 922 port number. Okay, the Chrome is going on a 922 port number. Okay, so what I'm going to do right now is, see here, the Chrome is launching on a 922 port number. So what I'm going to do right now is, let me change that particular port. Okay, let me change that particular port. So here I'm doing comma and I'm adding a port and the port that I want to run is 1234 is the port that I want to run with. Okay, 1234 is the port that I want to run with. That's it. So these are the things that you need to specify. Okay, these are the things that you need to specify. Let me save it and let me try to run this feature file again and see whether it is working or not. So it's trying to establish a connection with this particular 1234 port on a Chrome browser. 
and the Chrome browser was launched and now it should establish a connection with that particular application. See, now it's trying to open up that URL. See, the URL got opened and it terminated the browser instance also. See, explicitly you no need to use any command to terminate the browser instance here. Automatically the browser instance will be killed. So that's the reason what I'm going to do right now means then delay of 2000 milliseconds. I just want to add some delay here so that I want to see how exactly it's happening. So right now, let me change it to eight or a nine. So I have a given eight or a nine. And as we have studied with respect to the features, whenever the script got executed, automatically the execution report is being generated. Automatically a report is being generated. You can find that particular report within the target itself. Let us refresh the target. And if you go to the Surfice plugin, so karate summary.html. I'm opening with a system editor to see that particular report. See, validating the UI features. And if I open that particular content, it's tried to open that, fail to get the reply. So there is an issue with that application. That's the reason there was an issue. So here, what I'm doing right now means I'm trying to open a bing.com. And let me try to run this program and see how this is going to work. Run as a Cucumber feature file this time. And let us see right now. So the port number is a change the by default port number is a 9222. And you may ask a question, Surendra, how would you know the by default port is a 9222 and how you change that particular port? Let me show you a simple point. Okay, it opened the bing.com. It's waiting for a few seconds that we have a given. So we have a given around eight seconds and then it terminated that browser. We have already opened the report and if you refresh it, see basically the application got opened and it terminated that particular chunk too. Okay, and it terminated that particular chunk too. Let us open this particular browser. And if you see the documentation, whenever you use a Chrome, by default, it's going to launch it on a 922 port. On a 922 port itself, it's going to establish a connection. With this point, I can confirm that I was able to create a program and I was able to launch the application and I was able to wait for a few seconds and I can terminate it. The only thing that you need to use is a driver directly given driver. Automatically, the application URL you can specify it will open. And in my instance, I'm having an issue with respect to the browser versions. That's the reason I'm using in this particular way. Now, what I'm going to do right now here is let me comment this particular line. Let me try to change it to a Safari and check whether it is working or not. Given configure driver is equal to, again, I need to specify the type of the driver, the type Safari driver. I am on a Mac machine. Hence, I am specifying the Safari driver. To cross-check whether the Safari driver is there or not here, if you can see, the Safari driver is there in this particular list and the default port is a trip four five. Now, let me try to run the script and this time it should open a Safari browser in which the Bing.com application should be launched. Okay. And there was an issue with this Safari browser. Okay, so let me refresh the report. It shouldn't be an issue, but anyways, let me refresh the report. So here, session not created. You must enable allow remote automation in the Safari tools. Okay, so this is the syntax that it is looking for. For this Safari type as a Safari driver, see here, type as a Safari driver followed by the target is a null. So we are passing target as a null and it is not allowing it. Okay. So it's asking you must enable allow remote automation on this particular Safari browser. Let me try to run this script. Even we need to configure this Safari browser here. Let us see how exactly we can do this Safari configuration. Well, a bit more on these error messages to understand more. If you see right now, guys, could not create a session, you must enable allow automation option 
in safari developer menu basically this is a restriction from a safari browser not from an automation perspective this is restriction from an safari browser itself so what i'm doing right now means let me open the safari go to the preferences and in the advanced tab there is a developer menu okay select this developer menu hence this developer menu got highlighted and in this developer menu if you scroll down allowed remote automation option is there just enable it okay just enable it that's what it is asking you must enable allow remote option in a developer options that's what i have enabled right now let me come back to my program and let me kill my safari browser and let me try to run this program and see whether it is working or not so run as so this time it's using a default port and it established a connection with your safari browser and the browser got launched and waited for a few seconds and it terminated the browser and the most important thing that we need to consider here is analyzing the error messages is the key thing for us by looking into the error messages you can get a more insights and just by exploring that particular error messages itself you can clearly handle the various issues so this is the way how exactly Exactly, you can create a basic program that launches a browser and in the browser it will open that particular application perfect done the deal see you again in the next session thank you